And so I was like, ditto. You know, you, you look like someone. So we know that here it was that uh, they were fishing. And Peter said, hey, listen. Uh, Jesus is God. Our days are changed. We have a responsibility for providing for our families. And so let's, uh, let's go fishing because it was part that uh, uh, they were occupying and, and, and their ministry uh, is, is going to uh, blossom and change, but the Holy Ghost has not fallen. They've not been given the Holy Ghost in the upper room. So they're in that inter-period where he is fishing with, his, with, with the other disciples. And, and they fished all night on the Sea of Galilee or Tiberias, uh, whatever you want to call it, all the same. And uh, did they do pretty good fishing? No, they did terrible fishing. As much as they knew the right places to go at the right time, and, you know, that's important. I've always, uh, when I went on fishing trips at night, uh, I've always enjoyed that the captain knows where to go, and he takes us and he gets us in the fish. It's disappointing if you don't get in the fish. So they were having a really bad night, and uh, they, they were empty. And the Bible says, that morning was coming and Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered, No. And he said unto them, Cast your net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. Uh, 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 there you'll find. And uh, so they cast their nets there, and they were unable to draw it in because of the multitude of fishes. Praise God. You know, we can try lots of things in our own energy and our own power, our own talents, uh, but they'll be futile until God speaks and gives us direction on how to do it. Thank God for His direction. We find that particularly in the life of Peter, you know, he is a very passionate man. He's a very persuasive man. He's a man's man. He's a, a, a leader. He almost seems like born naturally, but, but it didn't work until God died. And so God told them to cast it on the other side. And the Bible says that John recognized that it was the Lord. And all of a sudden, Peter robed himself completely. And he took off because he wanted to see Jesus. And uh, when they got there, uh, at the shore, uh, 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 you know, there they were with their great catch of fish. Once again, they were big fish. They weren't average fish. They weren't small fish. But they were large fish. Amen. I like going with fishing with Jesus. He knows how to get us at the right place at the right time. That gets us like. But when they got there, he had fish on the fire. Now it wasn't from their catch because they're already cooked. And uh, 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 there he begins to provide for them. And he says to come and die. You know, God still calls come and die. He does. The Master calleth come and die. And, he's, and he takes the bread, and he takes the fishes, and he gives to them the bread symbolic of himself, the fish is a symbolic of the meat of God's Word. And, uh, and so we are uh, coming to the point of where we're at tonight. Now, let me just lay some groundwork here and just say a few things, because we're going to start looking at Peter in particular. And once God's done dealing with Peter, Peter tries to shift the light on John. Now, uh, I'll, I'll say this a little later as well, but when it comes to our relationship with God, it's your relationship with God. It's my relationship with God. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. God has a plan for each of us. And uh, so when we begin to reference someone who is a doubter, uh, we'll, we'll call them what? Doubting Thomas. Maybe if there's someone who's denying or, 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 or at the place where uh, uh, their, their faith lacks, maybe we'll call them Peter. You know, almost Peter gets the bat of the stick, and so does Thomas. However, these men have some great things to share with us and, and to teach us. One thing that we need to recognize about Peter is Peter's just an ordinary guy. He's a fisherman. He's an ordinary guy. Just, just one of the guys who's working hard trying to make a living. Trying to provide and do that which is right. And Christ comes and chooses him. Sounds like us tonight, doesn't it? Ordinary people who's trying to make a living. Who's trying to do what's right. But Christ chooses us. And Peter, uh, he gets us 
a rough way because you know what he, he is he's the one that is out on the waves and uh, he is in the wind and he's walking and he gets his eyes off Jesus and he begins to sink and all of a sudden we're like wow Peter you really messed it up you're not looking at Jesus uh, you're looking at the wind you're looking at the waves uh, Jesus had to pick you up and pull you up out of the water wait a second stop were there like 12 in the boat? And wasn't there Peter who got out? So let's give Peter some credit. He's all right. Even though he began to sing, the admiration for the man who wants to walk on the water with Jesus. Praise God. Listen, if God has to pick you up out of the water, it's all right. Just as long as you're not like everybody else sitting in the boat. God's coming. And uh, we look at Peter's life, and I want to reflect a little bit here on his life. Um, I guess I'm at the age of life, and I've shared this from the pulpit before. There's some things in my life I look back and say, man, I wish I would have done that differently. I wish I would have acted differently. I wish I wouldn't have worried about that. It was really irrelevant. It seemed huge at the time, but it was really nothing. I wish I would have responded different. Even when people treated me wrong, hey, What's my response? You know, I, so, you, but, but I hope that I'm at the point in my life now where should something similar to those situations happen, I can look back on my life experience and say, I'm not going to respond that way. Or I'm, I am going to respond this way. So life experience has something to be said uh, for our life, but also our walk with Christ. Because we learn in that walk with Christ. And so um, when I look at Peter, I find that he learned the importance of obedience. He learned that when he was walking on the water. That it's more important to look at Christ and be obedient to him than anything else that's going on around about you. So life lessons told him to, to the importance of obedience. And he learned not to question God. Do you remember Jesus said to him? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. And so he learns in life lessons that we can trust Christ. We don't have to question him, but we can trust him. And he learned this, that God will supply our needs. Didn't he see God supply in the multitude, 5,000? Didn't he see when it was time to pay the taxes that God provided for the fish? And so he learned that God will supply all of our needs. And so each one of us must live out our life lessons as the Holy Ghost deals with us. Life lessons, they're good. Be glad for where you're at. Be glad for what you've gone through. Be glad for the victory. Be glad for how Christ has, has led you and taught you and brought you to where you are today because God wants you to have life lessons. And so he's had some big life lessons, and then he's getting ready for a big question. Now, I will say, Brother Justin, I did look at what you said to me last week. I don't really find a whole lot, unless it was just my research and what I went to. Like I said, I did a long time ago. I was going to tell you the Greek word. I just remember it. Describe the fire. And that was awesome. That was a great thought. I just wanted you to know. I didn't just plow through it. I did try to look through some resources and even Google it. Uh, just try it. I didn't really find, I found some good stuff from doing that, but 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 that was good. So I don't want you to think I just overlooked that. And I'll continue to research on that. But uh, 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 someone read starting um, well, for right now, would someone read in chapter number 21, verse number 15, down to verse number 17? And let's look at it together. So when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than thee, and say that to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee, say that I love thee, my sheep. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me. He said unto him, Yea, Lord, and those that I love thee, he saith unto him, Be her sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Be her sheep. Amen. There's a lot to be said here, but I hope that I can do it out of justice. So, someone 
right now, I'll get to it in just a few moments. Someone look at Matthew 26, verse number 31 through 35. Matthew 26, 31 through 35. And then someone else look up Mark 14, verse number 29. And you're going to read through, through verse number 31. Well, I, I do agree with what I said a few times if you include that one to nine in three times. I believe so. I believe it has a lot to do with that. Probably, probably in reading and commentators and, 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 and personally relating to that, I definitely believe so. That's a very good thought, Brother, Brother Eli. And I appreciate that because he is addressing something about Peter's life. And uh, he is addressing the denial, uh, very much so. And the Bible says that after they got done breakfast with Jesus, I'll call it. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, uh, the Bible says that Jesus looks at Simon Peter and he said, do you love me? Do you love me? Now, remember how bold Peter was. He is this guy who's very bold. And uh, let's hear what he said. Someone uh, read Matthew 26, verse 31 to 35. Someone have Matthew 26, 31 to 35. Say to Jesus, so does it. But ye shall be offended because of me in this book, for it is written, I will slay the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto them, Though one man shall be offended because of thee, yet I will never be offended. Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto thee, This night before the cup of prayer, Thou shalt be not be praised. Peter said unto them, Though I shall not die with thee, yet I will not be praised. Now, this is interesting because Jesus is asking Peter, do you love me? Now, Peter previously had said this. He said, listen, you know, Jesus, everyone can be offended. Uh, you know, all of them can be offended, but, but not me. All the other disciples may be, but I am claiming, I am boasting, and his pride was saying, not me, I'll never do it. What did he do? He did it. He did that which he was boasting he would not do. So now Jesus is addressing something to make Peter aware of. You may say you love me. It's one thing to say something, but it's another thing to do it. And you may think you feel some way, but you're put into a particular situation. You will really find out how you do feel. So Peter maybe did feel like, I love Jesus, I would never do that. But put in that situation, he saw what his true colors were. Someone read Mark 14, verse number 29 through 31. And so here he is, 
the, the Word of God says that Jesus asked him this question. Do you love me? I know you said that, that you love me more than all the other disciples. No, don't add me, but you won't. But, 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 but I need to ask you. I'm not bringing anything up, but I need to ask you. Do you love me? Peter said what to him? How did Peter answer him when he said, do you love me? Yes, yes, Jesus, I love you. Now listen to this. The word love that Jesus uses is different than the word love Peter uses. In fact, Jesus uses the uh, agape love, which means that it is ardent, ardent, it is supreme, it is perfect. And then Peter uses the word love back that, that, that is philia, which means to be fond of, to feel friendship one for another. Do you know what? I can love certain people. You know, I love, I have a love for my friends. I, I, I do, uh, but it would be the philia love. But now if you ask me about my wife, it's a different love. She has a love that, well, and you know that, that are married. I've been married. You know how that feels. And so Jesus is approaching him with this agape love. It needs to be ardent. It needs to be fervent. It needs to be strong. And, and Peter replies back with a love that, 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 that is not the same limits and depth that Christ is asking for. God really does want our ardent, supreme, and perfect love. Listen, too many people think, Jesus is just nobody which I'm around with. And so he's my pal. Uh, God has a fondness for him. That is not the way God wants us to be. And so the same question he asked Peter, I believe he's asking us tonight. Do you love me? Peter said, yeah, I, 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 I love you. Then what did Jesus say unto him? He said, Feed my sheep, or particularly looking at this one, feed my lambs, feed the young. Feed those who are new in your faith. Listen, Peter, if you love me, I'm entrusting confidence to your response. So he asked him that the first time, right? So the second time, he asked him, he said, Simon, son, son of uh, Joe, do you love me? So he drops the more than these. He says, do you love me? That agape love. Uh, do, you, do you love me more than anything? Do you, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Once again, that phileo love. Not that it's negative, it's positive. But, 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 but there's something that he needs to see that is deeper. He said, feed my sheep. Sheep, not just a sheep. A strong and a joy. Listen, if we really love Christ, let me ask you this. You know, people's lives get messy. People's lives can get messy. And sometimes we like to pick and choose who we can nurture and help in the things of God. But God doesn't always give us the choice of that. But he says, if you love me, if you have a fervent, perfect, ardent love for me, take care of all the feed them. Those are the those of the maturity. Listen, if we love God, we will love people. Bottom line, we'll love people. Wow. We profess to love God, but we don't want to spend and be spent for others. We profess to love God, but we don't want to invest in other believers. Come on. I'm not even talking about me being a pastor and a pulpit. I'm talking about investing in the lives of others. 
loving them because I love God. Amen, Lord, you know, that's right. It will make you love everyone. I believe if we could see people the way that Jesus sees people, it will be different. Let's look at verse number 17. He says unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He actually this time uses the, 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 the weaker, the feed, the Leo love, as Peter used it. Peter was grieved because he said unto him a third time, Do you love me? Part of why it's grieved is sometimes we can't bring it to the actual text, but what I understand from commentators is, is because now Jesus uses this folio love to Peter. The question is, do you, do you love me in the folio love? The Bible says, and he said unto him, Lord, you know us all things. Wow, Peter just said something about Justin. He said, God, you know me. You know my thoughts. You know my heart. You know everything about me. You know me. You know me. You know how I feel. He knew that he had to wound his heart in order for it to come to a higher level of being able to shepherd others. Sometimes your wounded heart that God allows you to have isn't because God doesn't care for you. It's because He's he, He's taking you in a direction of being able to shepherd and help others. You know, the Word of God says that God is the God of all comfort who comfort us in our tribulations that we therewith can comfort others who go through the similar things that we go through. The, the walk and the journey of life that we go through, God is allowing that so that we can be ministered to by God, but that we can learn to minister to others. And so the woundedness, God knows everything about us, and He wants to use us. You know that I love you. And of course Jesus did know. Jesus said unto him, Be my sheep. And so now the tone changes where he's not just saying, Sister Beth, be my sheep, but it's true for the He's saying, Now with confidence, I know that you understand. And I know that you can totally take the responsibility of feeding my sheep. When God knows our heart, He changes our love for Him. He gives us responsibility and confidence to feed the sheep. It gets even tougher here. What's coming up is really, really tough. What's going to happen with Jesus and Peter? I mean, they're having some really hard to heart conversations. Someone read, if you would, verse number 18 and 19. Very, very, I say unto you, say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou wert thyself, and walked whether thou wast, for when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall hurt thee, and pray thee with thou for the scum, for the scum, for the scum. This make ye signify by which death, by what death ye should glorify God, and when he had spoken this, he saith unto his father. Wow. So a lot is happening in these scriptures right here that don't just this right. Jesus addresses Peter and he said, you know what? You were young. Oh, the folly of you, the folly of you, the folly of you, the folly of you. You walked, you did your own thing. You know, uh, you, you, you went your own way. He said, but you're getting older now, Peter. And uh, you're going to stretch forth your hands, and you shall, uh, and another shall gird you. He was talking about something that is good. He's given Peter a pat on the back. He said, "You know what, Peter? You might have did it one way in the past, but your path is going to be different. In your older years, you are going to be known for your faithfulness." And so I want you to be strengthened. I want your heart to know that it can find strength in knowing that, 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 that you're going to be faithful and you're going to do well. And he reminds 
him of his former being a coward. And although he said all the other disciples will go one way, he said, Peter, he said, but I want you to know you are going to be faithful, but it's going to be different for you. Because your walk from me, with me is going to carry you places that no one else goes, but it's going to be your walk with me. And then he began to talk to Peter about the things signifying his life and his death. Now, church history, Tertullian tells us that Peter, he did stretch forth his hands. And actually, he was martyred on the cross. However, he did not feel worthy to be died the same way in which his Lord and Savior died. But he said, crucify me upside down. So can you imagine you're talking to Jesus? He said, Peter, I know where you've been. You've been a coward as much as you boast. And you've walked in the problem of your life. But you've walked in arrogance. And you've done it your way. But life is going to be different now. You're going to be known as being faithful. Oh, aren't you glad for now the changes are wrong and who we are? Amen. He says, you're going to be known for your faithfulness. But Peter, you're going to die on the cross. That's big stuff. That's big stuff. You know, I hear people all the time on my job talking about, oh, I'm like, I'm not going to I want to have cancer and suffer. I'm going to go through all that. None of us know us our end. God does. And if he did tell us our end, we may not would like it. And I'm not sure Peter liked what he heard, to be honest. Why do I say that? Because, because uh, 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 he he said when 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 he had spoken this, he said unto him, "Follow me." You know, I want you to follow me. He said, not sporadically as you once have, but consistently. Your life is changed. And the Bible says in verse number 20 that Peter turning about seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and he said, Lord, which is he who betrays you? Peter seeing him said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. How do you like that? So Brother Dustin, Jesus says to Peter, Peter, you're going to be faithful. You're going to die on the cross. You're going to strip. Peter didn't like that. So all of a sudden he turns around and says to Peter, he sees John. Well, there's John. He denied you too. And, 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 and there's John. What about What's his going to be? You know what Jesus told him? It is not of your business, Peter. What if, what if he's, what, what, what if he, 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 he lives until uh, 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 I come again? It's not your business. See, God's will for Peter is different than God's will for John. Listen to me for just a moment. Know that God's will for ourselves will be different than anyone else. For Peter, he would die on the cross. But what about John? You see, some people serve God and it seems like they struggle most of their life. Some people serve God and it seems like everything just turns out optimistic and good for them. Why is that? Because it's the will of God for their lives. Some people die young. Some people live long. Why is that? Because it's God's will for their life. And so the most important thing for any of us to know is this, is that God has a perfect will for your life. 
I've talked to people who are dying and they're very young and they're struggling. Why does this, is God punishing me? Does he not like me? Does he not love me that I'm dying young? And so I, I, I hear that from some folks. And then on the other hand, I hear this brother Doug, from some older people. I don't know why I have to live so long because I've lost some of my family and everyone's gone. Why am I? So the, on both sides of the pendulum, there, there, there are struggles and there are problems. But one thing that is necessary for us to know is that God has a perfect will for us from birth.